Yes, yes, welcome back to your local radio network here in the far north of Scotland. We're broadcasting tell you from County O'Keethness, yes, County O'Keethness, the land of plenty. <laughs> now we're away south to our, uh, our sister radio station down here on the Bonnie Black Isle, and we're presenter down near Donny Matheson. Are you there, Donny? Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I'll set Donny here, and I'll set for another session. I shave in away the depression right now. <laughs> now uh, <clears throat> it's time now for another in our very popular series, documentary series, Highland Businesses. Each week we take an in-depth look at a particular business operating within the Highlands. Now, last week it was the salmon smoking business, and my eyes and my mouth are still watering. <laughs> but this week, this week we're looking at the kilt hiring business. Now, this is big, big business in the Highlands with lots of people hiring kilts for weddings, toffs do's, masonic do's, military do's, in fact, all kinds of dressing up kind of do's. It's also a very innovative business with lots of new tartans on the go. I came across one the other day, would you believe, from Argentina. <laughs> the McFray Bentus tartan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of red and white in it. Now, there's lots of new styles on the go. There's lots of new styles on the go. There's a traditional wedding kilt, of course, and very, very popular these days, the divorce kilt. <laughs> it's the same as the wedding kilt, but there's 50% less tartan in it. <laughs> then there's the new style of kilt. <laughs> then there's a the new style of kilts for civil, gay, lesbian, and bisexual weddings. <laughs> But there's always a bit of trouble, acrimony, and confusion over who's getting to wear the sporran. <laughs> then there's the new style politician's kilt. Now, the politician's kilts are made entirely from flannel. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> And you can claim them on expenses. There's even, <laughs> there's even allowances for second and third kilts. Now, the politician's kilt is also very, very comfortable and safe. The politician can freely cross his legs without having to worry about his deposit. <laughs> now, now, the politician's kilts come in a range of colours. There's the Tory blue with a big yellow streak. <laughs> There's the Lib Dem yellow, but predominantly blue. There's the Labour red, but with a fair splash of the McFray Bentus. There's... The SNP kilt colour is yet to be decided as they're going to have a referendum on it. And I cannot believe it, the Green Party are still arguing about their kilt colour. <laughs> then there's the new style bankers kilt. Now... <laughs> It's worn well below the knee these days to avoid dodgy overdrafty situations. In fact, they're so frightened of getting a draft these days, some of their kilts are trailing on the ground. Now, the, the banker's sporran depends, on the, of course, on the size of his, of his bonus. And some of them are the size of double-decker buses these days. Sadly, the banker's kilt only comes in the one colour, deep in the red. Then there's the new style anti-global warming eco-warriors kilt. Now it comes complete with solar panels and a windmill. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's even plans for hydropower. But kilt hiring is also, would you believe, a very high risk business. You see, the kilt hirer, the shopkeeper, has to assess each customer as he comes into the shop so he can determine what condition the outfit will come back in, if it comes back at all. <laughs> Bearing in mind that where the juice of the barley is being served, 
The outfit can sometimes get damaged. Well, we're very lucky to have in the studio here today a failed Highland kilt hider, Colin Campbell, to tell you in his own words just how very difficult and traumatic it is being a Highland kilt hider. He's entitled his story, The Kilt Hider's Nightmare. <laughs> 